Question number 46 is in the following reaction I2 is reacting with the twice of I2 O3 2 minus to give 2 I minus plus S4 O6 2 minus the equivalent weight of iodine will be now in this reaction if you will see the iodine is changing to twice of I minus this will be happening by the reduction reaction by gaining of two electrons so equivalent weight of the iodine will be the molecular weight of the iodine divided by two as it is gaining two electrons in this reaction therefore it will be half of the molecular weight hence option b question number 47 the compound contains 54.55 percent of carbon 9.09 percent of hydrogen and 36.36 percentage of oxygen we need to find the empirical formula of the compound so over here carbon is 54.55 percent divided by its atomic weight that comes out to be 4.54 then hydrogen that is 9.09 divided by 1 so 9.09 .09. and oxygen it's 36.36 divided by 16 that comes out to be 2.27 now the lowest ratio amongst them is 2.27 so we'll divide every number by 2.27 so this comes out to be approximately 2 this is divided by 2.27 approximately it's 4 and 2.27 that is equals to 1 therefore empirical formula is C2H4O therefore option D question number 48 the characteristic not associated with the Planck's theory is radiations are associated with energy yes Planck says the every radiation is accompanied by some change in the energy the magnitude of energy associated with the quantum is proportional to the frequency yes radiations energy neither emitted nor absorbed continuously and option D radiations and energy neither emitted or absorbed discontinuously it is actually continuously hence option D question number 49 the particle having mass of 1 mg has velocity of 3600 km per hour calculate the wavelength of the particle we need to calculate the wavelength over here they have given us the h value that is in erg per centimeter therefore now velocity which is given it's 3600 kilometer per hour that will convert into seconds so we'll divide it by 3600 that comes out to be one but we'll convert it into centimeter so kilo is 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 2 so that comes out to be 10 raised to 5 centimeter per second then we have the mass which is given one mg so this is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 gram so now the formula is lambda is equals to h upon mg h is given 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 27 divided by 10 raised to minus 3 that is mass into 10 raised to 5 that's velocity when you calculate calculate this particular answer this comes out to be 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 29 centimeter therefore option b question number 50 the statement that is true for the long form of periodic table is option a it reflects the sequence of filling the electrons in the order of sub energy levels it rather gives information about the energy levels not the sub energy levels it helps to predict the stable valence valence states of the element uh, it can also give you idea about the variable and it reflects the trends in the physical and the chemical properties yes this is the proper the definition of the periodic table which one of the following contains both ionic and the covalent bond c6h5cl h2o naoh and co2 the option is naoh because between na and oh there is an ionic bond and inside the OH there is covalent bond between the oxygen and hydrogen therefore option C question number 52 is a coordinate bond is a dative covalent bond which of the following is true three atoms form a bond by sharing of their electrons two atoms form a bond by sharing of their electrons two atoms form the bond 
and one of them provides both the electrons. This is absolutely true. That is called as a coordinate bond. One of them only shares the electrons. Question number 53. The type of forces that can be present in ethanol molecule will be. Ethanol is C2H5OH. Now in this case dipole-dipole interaction. This is a polar molecule. Definitely it shows the dipole-dipole interaction. Option B, the London forces. Every molecule has the London forces because if it is a non-polar also, that also gives you the formation of the London forces. Hydrogen bonding is also present because hydrogen is bonded to the oxygen in this case. And that's why the dipole, that is the polarity difference is so high that it can be satisfied only by the hydrogen bonding. Therefore, option D, all of this. Question number 54. The enthalpy is equals to. Now, when we calculate this for equation, that is Gibbs Helmholtz equation, we have a formula G is equals to H plus T into delta G upon delta T at constant pressure. If we we'll divide the entire equation by T square, we'll get G upon T square is equals to H upon T square plus this will be 1 upon t gt by dt at constant pressure on rearranging the equation we'll get delta of g upon t that is dt at constant pressure that's equals to minus h upon t square that is in short h is equals to t square delta g by t dt at constant pressure therefore option B. <clears throat> Next question number 55 is the heat of combustion of carbon monoxide at a constant pressure and a constant volume at 27 degrees Celsius will differ from one another by. So it's a combustion of carbon monoxide. Combustion of carbon monoxide is carbon monoxide reacting with the oxygen so as to give carbon dioxide. So here half mole of oxygen is required. So, if I will calculate the delta N over here, overall product ratio number of moles is 1 minus this is 1 and 1.5. So, 1.5 that is equals to minus 0.5. We have a formula heat at constant pressure is equals to heat at constant volume plus delta NRT. So, QP minus QV is equals to delta NRT. Delta N over here is minus 0.5 R we can take 2 and this is 300 Kelvin 27 degrees Celsius so that comes out to be around 300 so minus 300 calories therefore option C question number 56 5 moles of SO2 and 5 moles of O2 are allowed to react with to form the SO3 so SO2 is reacting with O2 so as to give formation of SO3 in this we need half of the oxygen in this case so in the uh, they are saying at the equilibrium 60% of SO2 is used up initially we have 5 moles of this 5 moles of this and 0 moles of this is the initial condition now 60% of SO2 if it reacts so 60% of 5 mole that is 60 upon 100 into 5 moles so if we we'll calculate this comes out to be around 3 so 3 moles of this will react so 5 minus 3 that's 2 left behind again half of this will react because if 3 of this is reacting then half of the 3 that is 0.5 is going to react so 1.5 if i'll see so 5 minus 1.5 the left behind is 3.5 this will give me 3 moles of SO3 because as many number of moles of SO2 will react I will get the same number of the SO3 <coughs> at equilibrium therefore 2 plus 3.5 plus 3 that comes out to be 8.5 mole total moles available question number 57 white phosphorus react with the caustic soda the product are pH3 and NaH2 P2 the reaction is when I'm talking about the white phosphorus that is P4 when it reacts with NaOH it is giving me pH3 plus NaH2PO2. Now if you look at the oxidation state of phosphorus over here it is 0. In case of pH3 
this particular case has minus 3 while over here it is plus 1. So at one stage it is increasing, at one stage it is decreasing. So the same element is undergoing the oxidation as well as the reduction. This particular reaction we call it as disproportionation reaction. Therefore option C. Question number 58. Which of the following act as oxidizing as well as reducing agent? Here we should remember any element which is having the intermediate oxidation state can show you this kind of reaction. In this case, the Na2O, the sodium, this is minus 2, this is having the plus 2. So, every sodium has a plus 1 oxidation state. Over here also, it is minus 2, so minus 4, so it is plus 4. So, every sodium over here has the oxidation state of plus 2. In the case of NaNO2, again it is plus 1 and nitrate in which it is nitrogen is having the highest oxidation state of plus 5. So, all this case, sodium cannot show the negative oxidation state. But in the case of this nitrite state, this particular nitrite, when it is acting like the oxidizing agent, it gives you formation of the nitrate NO3. And when it is getting reduced, you get formation of NO. So, this can show the oxidation as well as reduction. Therefore, option D. Question number 59. There is a sample of 20 volumes of hydrogen peroxide solution. Calculate its strength. Now, in the case of hydrogen peroxide, whenever hydrogen peroxide is reacting, it gives us a formation of water with the liberation of oxygen. If we we'll balance the reaction, this is twice, this is twice. Now, if you look at the molecular weight of H2O2 is 34. Now, there are twice of H2O2, that means 68 grams. It's corresponding to 20 2.4 liter of oxygen at NTP. So 22.4 liter of oxygen is obtained from 68 gram. Therefore, if we we'll calculate for 20 liters and since it is 20 volume, so 20 liter can be obtained from 20 into 68 divided by 22.4. So this comes out to be around 60.7 that is gram per liter. Now 1000 ml of that oxygen which is obtained from 60.7 gram per liter. So 100 ml of oxygen will be obtained from 100 into 60.7 divided by 1000. So that comes out to be around 6.07. Therefore strength is 6.07 percent. Question number 61, 60. The hardening stage of the plaster of Paris, the compound formed is in hardening stage the plaster of Paris is absorbing water and uh, it becomes twice of H2O. So CaSO4 twice of H2O. Option, uh, option D. Because it's orthorhombic, it should be monoclinic. It, then question number 61. Aluminium reacts with the caustic soda to form. When aluminium reacts with caustic soda, aluminium plus NaOH, in water it reacts so as to give any alo2 sodium meta aluminate therefore option c <coughs> question number 62 the common alum is the common alum is k2so4 al2so4 thrice 24h2o therefore option a question number 63 lactic acid lactic acid is having structure of ch3 coh cooh h so this is having one chiral center, therefore option A. Question number 64. Which of the following reaction can be used to prepare the methane? The Clemensons reduction, this is generally for use for the aldehydes and ketones where the carbonyl groups can be reduced to corresponding alkene. But here there will be at least two carbons, so methane cannot be prepared by this method. Option B, Wurtz reaction, not possible for this because again the minimum alkane which can be prepared by this method is ethane. Reduction of the ethane that will give us formation of ethane and reduction of methyl iodide using the zinc copper couple. So this is, will give us the formation of the methane. Question number 65, the CH3C triple bond CH. First, when I'm talking about the H2SO4 reaction, this will follow the Markovnikov's rule. And when the Markovnikov's rule is followed, the water will be added according to 
the OH will go to the carbon having the less number of hydrogen atom. So I'll get CH3COH double bond CH2 which will undergo the tautomerism where the proton will be transferred here and double bond will be shifted here. So as to give CH3 C double bond OCH3 this is our compound number B. While the BH3 THF complex follows the anti Markovnikov's rule where we'll get CH3 CH2 sing double bond CHOH. Again here the proton will be shifted at proton will be shifted over here and double bond will be shifted here. So I'll get CH3 CH2 CH double bond O. So A compound is propanoldehyde and the B compound is the acetone. Therefore option B. Question number 66. The methane gas which is producing field it is called as paddy field it is having a continuous bubbles of the formation of the methane question number 67 which what is the number of tetrahedral voids present in the crystal tetrahedral voids are always double the number of the atoms so it is always twice question number 68 how many unit cells are present in the tube shaped ideal crystal of NaCl of mass 1 gram so if I will talk about the mass of the one unit cell that is nothing but molecular weight into Z upon Na. So molecular weight is 58.5 for the NaCl uh, multiplied by Z it is FCC structure therefore it's 4 divided by 6.02 into 10 to 23. So this is the mass of one unit cell. So this mass 58.4 into 4 divided by 6.02 into 10 to 23 that corresponds to one unit cell therefore 1 gram corresponds to how much so this is 6.02 into 10 to 23 divided by 58.4 into 4 so this comes out to approximately 2.57 into 10 to 21 therefore option a question number 69 Elevation in the boiling point was 0.52 when 6 grams of compound was dissolved in 100 grams of water. Molecular weight we need to find out. So according to the formula we have the delta Tb that is elevation in the boiling point is equals to the Kb multiplied by the weight of the substance divided by the molality that is the weight in kilogram multiplied by if the weight is in gram that it should be multiplied by thousand so we need to find the molecular weight of the substance into molecular weight so molecular weight of the substance is nothing but kb into w upon delta tb into capital w so the kb is given 0 0.52 multiplied by weight of the solute given six grams divided by the weight of the solvent which is over here is 100 grams is given so 100, 100 grams multiplied by the elevation in boiling point that is we have already taken Molecule, uh, elevation in bo uh, boiling point is given 0.52 this is given 5.2 so this is 0.52 this is in the gram so we need to multiply it by 1000 so when you calculate this, this comes out to be around 60. So molecular weight of the substance is 60. Question number 70. A solution is prepared by dissolving 24.5 grams of sodium hydroxide in distilled water to give 1 liter of solution. Molarity of NaOH is. Generally the molarity is calculated for 1 mole solution present in 1 liter of solution. Therefore option C. 71 3 faraday of electricity is passed through the solution of agno3 copper sulfate and aucl3 the molar ratio of the cations we need to find if i'll find ag need one electron to get deposited as ag then copper need two electrons to get deposited as cu and gold needs three electrons to get deposited as au as it is having 3 plus 2 plus and plus 1 charge now if we pass 3 faraday of electricity this is going to give us the 3 moles this will give us the 3 by 2 and this will give us the 1 mole so multiplying every term by 
2 will get this is as 6 3 and this is 2 so this is 6 raised to 3 is to 2 therefore option B question number 72 for the first order reaction the half life is 14 seconds the time required for the initial concentration to reduce its 1 8th for the first order reaction we have a formula n is equals to n0 into 1 by 2 raised to n n is the order of reaction so this fill is going to become 1 by 8 n0 into 1 by 2 raised to n so from this we can say n is equals to 3 so time is number of frequencies multiplied by t half so here it's 3 multiplied by half life is 14 so that will be 42 seconds therefore option c the activation energy for most of the reaction is approximately 50 kilojoule per mole the value of the temperature coefficient in such reaction is generally if the temperature coefficient ratio of the two velocity is constant having the difference of 10 degrees celsius the temperature coefficient is given by the k1 plus 10 divided by k1 and if i talk about this particular uh, equation this temperature coefficient is generally having the values of between 2 to 3 so it's more than 2 less than 3 therefore option a question number 74 which of the following is not correct milk is naturally occurring emulsion yes true question number option b gold is the lyophilic soul gold is a lyophobic soul this is incorrect question number 75 the van arkel method of purification of the metals involves the converting metal to usually van arkel process involves the titanium reacts with the iodine so as to give tii4 which is a volatile stable compound which is after converting into volatile compound impurities are removed and then it is further heated to get the ti back therefore it is converted into volatile stable compound question number 76 which of the following is correct tin is the stone tin stone is a magnetic in nature it is non magnetic in nature wolframite is non magnetic wolframite is magnetic in nature wolframite is fewo4 yes this is option c Ramsey and the Rayleigh solutions of isolations of the noble gases from the air nitrogen and air is finally converted into first of all nitrogen and oxygen react as passes through the electric spark to get converted into nitrogen oxide this nitrogen oxide is further oxidized to NO2 and then it is dissolved in uh, NaOH so as to get NaNO2 and NaNO3 therefore option d question number 78 which amongst the following metal does not dissolve in aqua regia it is iridium it is not a noble element as the platinum gold therefore it will not dissolve in the aqua regia which of the following ion is diamagnetic in nature in the lanthanide series there are only two elements that is lanthanum 3 plus and lutetium 3 plus which are not having any unpaired electrons since they are having the empty and completely filled f orbital therefore option b the iup is the name of the compound in this case this will be the long chain which is containing 2 plus 4 and 2 6 electro uh, carbon in the long chain now here if i number 1 2 3 this will be 3 dichloromethyl 4 trichloromethyl hexane therefore the option for the question is option b question number 81 the Wurtz reaction involves the reduction of the alkyl halide with Wurtz reaction involves sodium in ether which amongst the following compound will give the secondary alcohol on reaction with the Grignard reagent followed by the acid hydrolysis generally the this secondary alcohols are given by the aldehyde where the r group is specifically the alkyl group not hydrogen therefore option two can give 
and it also be given by the esters in which the esters are formed therefore option 4 can also give so 2 and 4 both can give us the secondary alcohol therefore option D question number 83 the alkene is given which is on treatment with the C meta chloroparabenzoic acid so this is uh, it's going to give us the formation of diols at this position OH will be added here double bond will become single bond OH and these two carbons as it is therefore option A question number 84 which of the following aldehyde is most reactive most reactive aldehyde is uh, number of as the alkyl groups increases the positive charge on the carbon atom also increases alkyl groups are electron donating so that will increase the electronegativity of electron rich nature of this particular carbonyl carbon and in short the reactivity will decrease in the third case there is a hydrogen atom present over here which will not give any kind of electron donation therefore option c question number 85 in pyridine the state of hybridization of nitrogen is the pyridine structure is kind of like a benzene ring where the nitrogen will have definitely sp2 hybridization the reaction of aniline with the benzaldehyde when we talk about aniline it's c6h5nh2 which its reaction with the benzaldehyde c6h5 there will be definitely a condensation reaction question number 87 all proteins are simple biocatalyst useful and polymers they are polymers this is a monomer of monomer is the teflon which of the following has been used in manufacture of non inflammable photographic films it's cellulose acetate aspartame aspartame is having structure of uh, benzene ring which is attached to CH2 then C double bond O OCH3 then further it is attached to NH then C double bond O having structure over here as this is NH2 then CH2 and this is COOH group so they are saying if assuming both amide and esters bonds are hydrolyzed so this amide is hydrolyzed one of the molecule will be the the acid formation of this so the option b is possible it will give us the acid like the option b and if this is hydrolyzed this will become nh2 and this particular part is again going to become coh so it is like option a so both option a and b both are obtained in this case therefore option c